Welcome to Alibaba Cloud webinar session. My name is Kingston and I'm going to talk about migration to Alibaba Cloud. And the same session will be available on demand in Alibaba Cloud website. Little bit of background about me. I'm working as a solutions architect at Evolve LLC in Dubai. And it's a joint venture of Alibaba Cloud and Miras. I'm an Alibaba most valuable professional on solutions. And I used to be a Microsoft most valuable professional on messaging for last two years. And I'm Alibaba Cloud and AWS certified solutions architect. And I've been writing a blogs and articles about technologies over last five or six years. Feel free to check out my blog, which is cloudexchanges.com. And you can check out my LinkedIn profile, which is Kingston MVP. So what you will be learning from this webinar. So I'm going to talk about few migration scenarios. And I'm also going to explain how the migration works. And uh, there are subset of tools available within Alibaba. So which one would be the appropriate solution uh, to complete the migration. And we also have Q&A at the end of this presentation. So feel free to ask all your questions and I'd be more than glad to assess them. So let's get started. Um, before proceeding with any other slides, I would like to give some overview on uh, cloud benefits. So there are a lot of reasons an organization wants to move to cloud as Cloud is the most suitable platform for an organization who wants to expand their business globally or if an organization um, is open to enter into modern digital transformation technology, Cloud is the right platform. Especially uh, Alibaba Cloud have got a lot of products and services with the most innovative latest technology which will help an organization to meet or go beyond their expectation and uh, cloud can also be considered for disaster recovery scenario and we all know that you know cloud could bring uh, a wide range of benefits to an organization um, to move from capex to opex model and apart from that we all know that cloud can provide you the agile platform and scalable reliable and all of that so when we talk about different migration scenarios, we have a few migration uh, scenarios available. So or, or you could think of few scenarios. Um, if you are thinking to migrate to Alibaba Cloud, the source could be of anything. It could be your on-premise IDC or a traditional virtualization platform or any other public or private cloud service provider. Or if you are expanding within your Alibaba Cloud, to another region so you might have to migrate some of your workloads to another region or you might have to expand your uh, workloads to another region so we will be discussing all these scenarios in detail so before we start any sort of migration there are few stages involved because migration is a critical challenge for businesses of all sizes the reason i'm saying this because Cloud platform and a traditional IT environment are totally different. Keeping that in mind, we might have to design a whole new architecture or to see whether the same architecture can be used within a cloud platform. So to determine whether a business system is suitable for migration to the cloud, we might have to do some kind of a cloud ready assessment that involves capacity evaluation planning, infrastructure assessment, and a migration designed to decide which workloads can be moved to the cloud. This is this becomes necessary uh, to assess the current system for performance, load testing, and stress testing. Um, I would I would call this as a kind of a research within your own environment to understand the application system architecture and the database info information and overall system architecture and the underlying platform, business uh, software dependencies and so on. Um, so with this information, we will 
proceed to the next stage which is the migration kickoff meeting where all the parties be engaged or it's recommended to be engaged with all the partners and providers the application experts uh, dbas and project managers partners uh, to make sure that we have the complete plan in place and uh, which migration plan we're going to choose uh, which one would be the right appropriate uh, plan uh, for the business so so this this migration kickoff meeting will include all sort of server information applications and you might have to prepare the downtime and cut over and other critical requirement uh, so once we have this information we are almost 50 percent we are done with the migration planning the reason is we have the complete information we know what which migration uh, plan or the tool or the methodologies is going to work for the business and with that said you might also have should plan for the backup because a migration plan is incomplete without a backup plan because once you start the migration there is always a probability of error and damage can be irreversible so once you have the black backup plan schedule the migration and notify the users if there is any downtime is expected during cutover and make a checklist of all the functions when i say you might have to make a checklist of functions it is better to segregate uh, with the complete information as front end network application middleware database and an operating system that would be really helpful once you migrate your complete workload or in a hybrid model or, or a disaster recovery scenario so post migration you can check and verify if all the functions are completely uh, fine and is it uh, just to ensure that fully working operations so once you have the migration design so based on the previous research and in combination with the design of the cloud platform we might have to generate a, a complete new architecture or a transformation plan for migration and before the system goes live we must perform full functional verification and uh, so the cutover also involves a lot of stages um, the system cutover stages of course involve switching the system traffic to the target cloud platform and uh, during the implementation process the system cutover um, not only involves you know switching the system traffic to the cloud platform there are a lot of things has to be done uh, depends on the workload you might have to do some namespace planning prepare, preparation of cloud product resources or a database migration or application migration uh, so you might have to do all kind of a verification to ensure that your um, uh, servers are fully functional and that includes your licensing as well um, it is better or once you are done with the migration you might have to restart your system to see if that's generating any critical events which needs your intervention so all these stages are based on the best practices in place and based on uh, uh, my overall experience migrating larger workloads to the cloud so the migration process um, seamless is what we all expect when it when it comes to information technology we all know this for sure because and especially for migration uh, we expect everything to be seamless, uh, real time and uh, no interruption is expected and we expect uh, uh, less downtime. However, this is easier said than done. There are a lot of reasons behind this and uh, cloud migration is really complicated as it involves many elements as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you might have to pick up a right operating system and a geographical location for your deployment and you have to do all kind of assessment design and if if the architect re-architecturing is required you might have to complete that complete process uh, to match with um, cloud products which is available migration also involves numerous standard processes and consideration and remember that there, there is no small feat but to overcome all these challenges, Alibaba has came up with different migration tools and methodologies which will make your migration process easy and effective. Uh, 
Um, so to name three uh, important tools, the first one is the Alibaba cloud migration tool and the data transport and data transmission. So let's discuss all these tools and the purposes. So there are three different types of migration. Of course, there are many types of migration, but for on a high level, we have three different types of migration. Application and VM, or you can call it as image migration or data migration. If you're talking about, about an application level migration, some applications will support or I would say most of the application will support native replication method. So if, if any of your application, so I, I could give some example, like if you have an exchange server, there is a native functionality called DAG, which will enable you to expand your network to cloud and make it a hybrid cloud and build your exchange server. Once you build your exchange server, you, you will be able to configure these two sites into a DAG then you, you will be able to uh, use the native replication functionalities. Doing this will enable application level migration and the downtime is also very less or so, sometimes you can even do it with a zero downtime. And uh, VM migration, as I mentioned earlier, there are uh, different migration uh, strategies which is available within Alibaba Cloud. VM migration is being part um, which is very important so uh, in general if i have to say if you're migrating from any source to alibaba cloud this is commonly be referred as um, platform to platform migration one platform to other platform migration this vm migration say if you're using any other virtualization platform or a physical server you might have to take a image of that particular file of particular server uh, it could be a VHD format or it could be a raw format. Once you have the image ready, you, you can upload it into Alibaba Cloud and from there you can create an instance. And we have data migration. If you have a database or just a data to be migrated to cloud, you, you have uh, some standard procedures to achieve this within Alibaba Cloud. So let's talk about Alibaba Cloud Migration tool irrespective of the source platform the alibaba cloud migration tool can be used to perform migration to create new elastic compute service instances so i have i have worked with a few different projects and in fact i used the um, legacy tool um, within alibaba so initially the process was kind of a are difficult when you start a migration process and taking an image and you might have to upload it into a OSS manually. From there, uh, we had to create a new instance. But all these challenges have been fixed and completely resolved within this tool. This tool is really amazing. When you start the migration process, it takes care of everything. So let me show you some short demo on how it looks and what what are the procedures are involved. So this is the process. If you are going to start Alibaba cloud migration tool to migrate some of your workload or a virtual machines or a physical machine, um, you first have to request Alibaba cloud migration tool. And uh, after following certain approval process, you will get the source file where you can modify certain critical information uh, to access to the Alibaba cloud and migrate all your images to Alibaba cloud. So this is how the folder looks like. And once you extract the folder, you can see something called user config, which is a JSON file. Open that with the notepad and modify as shown here. So you can take a access ID and secret key. Once you log in into Alibaba cloud portal, just go to the user settings uh, from a security settings, you can access all the keys and generate a new key and set it to private as a security measure. Then uh, place that information here and region ID, you, you can find this information within Alibaba Cloud uh, for every region and name as you like. And you might have to mention your system disk image and platform architecture 
So if you go to Alibaba uh, Cloud website and if you see Alibaba Cloud Migration Tool, all this information and what are the critical parameters which you need to mention, what are the uh, what are the parameter looks like. So all that information you can get it from there. Save that file and go to uh, Aliyun client and run as an administrator. Once you start running this process, you will notice it creates a VPC, vSwitch and security group all by itself. So as you see, after this process, you will see in Alibaba cloud, there will be a temporary instance gets created. And once all your data gets migrated, all the image conversion been taken care of by this tool. And whatever the name you gave, you, you will be able to see that into the uh, as an image. So during the migration, you can see uh, instance name called instance for go to Alium. Posting the same will be exported with the image name that is specified in JSON. And the same instance which was running temporarily will be released. So it's done. So what you can do is once this is done, go ahead and create a new instance. Um, it's, it's recommended to start your new instance in pay as you go model and to see if all the functionalities are working as expected. And once you see all the functionalities are working as expected, then either you can, uh, you have an option to convert that into a subscription model or you can leave as it is, or if you want, uh, if you are postponing or if you are, uh, if you have a plan to do that migration later, you, you can even release that instance. Now let's talk about data transport. What is data transport? Data transport is a petabyte point-to-point -point offline data migration service. And this is pretty much similar to Snowball, which AWS has. You can use a secure equipment to upload large amounts of data to Alibaba Cloud. And this will help you to resolve common problems associated with data migration to Alibaba Cloud. So that common issues include expensive dedicated lines, lengthy transmission times, and uh, potential security risk. So data transport allows you, allows you to upload large amounts of data securely and efficiently all while reducing the cost. So to be precise, what is data transport? A secure solution to migrate TB level or PB level data to Alibaba Cloud. Here is the architecture of data transport. So if you see all your data will get encrypted and compressed into a, a, into a drive and then the, the drive, a secure drive will get shipped into the Alibaba Cloud data center and be plugged into the data center. And the data will be uploaded into OSS using high speed. Once you have the data available within Alibaba Cloud, you can use that data to create ECS instance or any. you can utilize any other products and services which is available within Alibaba Cloud. So the next important migration process or the tool which is DTS. DTS is nothing but the data transmission service. So data transmission service is a data exchange service that streamlines data migration, data synchronization and data subscription. It is applicable for databases running on Alibaba Cloud and it is compatible with widely used open source databases. So as you can see here, DTS supports a number of database engines including relational database like Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server and Postgres or NoSQL database such as Redis or MongoDB. And the best advantage of this specific tool is it supports homogeneous migration and heterogeneous migration. Uh, say for example, if you are migrating from an Oracle to a SQL, this tool will take care of the entire conversion of the tables uh, and the complete data. So everything has been taken care of by this tool. So there are few three features available within this DTS functionality. One is data migration and the other one is data subscription and data synchronization. Data subscription and data synchronization is pretty much similar, but there are a few differences. Um, 
So the first let's discuss about data migration. Data migration helps you quickly and easily migrate data between different databases. As I mentioned earlier, it supports homogeneous migration such as MySQL to MySQL and heterogeneous migration like Oracle to Alibaba Cloud RDS. So DTS provides basic ETL functions including multi-level object mapping and data filtering. And the next feature which is data subscription. So this data subscription helps you to obtain real-time incremental data of a specific RDS instance. So that includes all your cache update, message notification, real-time data synchronization and again real-time data synchronization with complex ETL. So the next feature is data synchronization. Data synchronization helps you replicate the data between two diff databases in a real time. And it is applicable to scenarios. So basically if you have a database and uh, if you want to synchronize that to Alibaba Cloud, that can act as your disaster recovery data as well. If there is any dis disaster happens, within your on-premise and you always always have the data available within Alibaba Cloud which you can utilize to build your application and connect it with your database to keep your applications up and running. Real-time data synchronization between two RDS instances and data synchronization between RDS instances in a classic network and RDS instances in a VPC network and the next feature is data synchronization between two RDS instances under different Alibaba cloud accounts as well. So the next scenario, region to region migration. If you already have a, some, some of your workloads which is running on some region within Alibaba cloud and if you want to expand your business or you want to migrate to a different region, you, have, you just have to simply follow these steps. It's pretty simple. You just have to take a backup of your image of an ECS instance and create a support ticket to enable image copy option because this option is not enabled by default. And once you have this option enabled, create an image. Uh, if you have the image already, so you can go ahead and directly copy that image to your target region and create an instance from a target region using the custom image function. So the next Important thing when we talk about migration, most of them might ask, you know, what will happen? Well, how do I do a real-time replication? So here is the answer. So if you really, you, if your application or your business needs real-time replication for some reason, you might have to choose our trusted Alibaba Cloud partner, or you can choose to, uh, you know, pick some of your some of our marketplace image, which is readily available. Um, say for example, last uh, I've done few projects with uh, um, closely working with our partner um, to name some of them SAS AME and uh, ATA data. So these partners, uh, marketplace image is readily available for your DR or migration scenario. You can choose to choose from there, and it's pretty much uh, straightforward. You just have to choose and then pick up a license and you can start migrating all your workloads from uh, from your on-premise or from any of the source platform to your Alibaba cloud. So as I mentioned earlier, post-migration, there are few steps involved. And now that we migrated most of the workloads, so there are few steps which is involved and this is where all the checklist comes into play, place and ensure all the services are functioning properly and make a comparison using the uh, checklist and um, if, if there are different uh, experts involved within the IT workload, you might have to engage the application expert, DBA, again a project manager to verify if all the process went smooth and ensure that the Windows license is activated. Most of the time it gets activated by default. Uh, if not, you might have to just simply run this command to get this activated and ensure to conduct all DNS redirection to Alibaba Cloud Public Instance if required. And uh, remember one thing, migrating to Alibaba cloud computing platform brings user a wide ranges of benefits. These benefits include uh, appropriate uh, technical strategies, best practices to solve 
uh, most of your application issues that includes all your scalability issues uh, such as and uh, you know some of the issues like uh, database segmentation asynchronous performance problems and uh, of course maintenance so make sure uh, you you get all this benefit out of uh, cloud so once you migrate and whether you have it in a hybrid or a DR or you're using a fully functional cloud you you might have to follow all these standard procedures it might differ based on the scenarios but uh, I, I assume that this session might help you to choose the best appropriate uh, method based on your need so make sure uh, this is something I have mentioned earlier restart your server and see if there are any specific specific events which uh, needs your immediate attention. So, any questions? Um, thank you all for joining. So, let me address all your uh, questions here.